Let's time it up for the news review of this bulletin. Iran has rejected as interventionist the statements by some Western countries regarding a new hypersonic missile that the Islamic Republic unveiled recently. The Foreign Ministry spokesman said Iran's missile program is conventional and completely legitimate based on international law. Nasser Kanani described the country's missile capabilities as effective deterrence against foreign threats and a means to defend its national security. He said the countries accusing Iran have a long record of violating their international obligations. The spokesman cited a security pact between the U.S., the U.K., and Australia known as AUKUS, saying its aim to transfer highly enriched uranium to a non-nuclear country is a direct violation of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Under the deal, Washington and London will assist Canberra acquire nuclear-powered submarines. Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps unveiled a homegrown hypersonic missile dubbed Fatah on Tuesday. Zakir Ahmed Mayed is an attorney, activist, and political analyst joining us from Johannesburg. We also have Firas al Najim, human rights activist, joining us from Toronto. Welcome to you both. Uh, Zakir, if I may first start with you. When you take a look at the criticism that's leveled against Iran on this, um, uh, shouldn't it be the opposite? Because by Iran acquiring and uh, coming up with this, uh, in a sense, it's going to ensure the uh, military threats that keep coming from basically two areas, one from the Zionist regime, Israel, the other from the U.S., so by having this in its arsenal, uh, that will make those two think twice, maybe, about attacking Iran. Indeed, uh, the objection is that Iran has now a deterrent capacity. Uh, there was no objection when Israel developed the Jericho 2 missile in 1977 and tested it out in collaboration with the apartheid regime here in South Africa in the Overberg Mountains, in fact giving rise to the platform, the RSA-2, which was nuclear capable and the apartheid regime had possession of that, the six atomic bombs uh, that were kept in Pilandaba and the Western world turned a blind eye largely uh, to the atrocities of the apartheid regime and Israel's collaboration in violation of the embargoes, uh, the arms embargoes, because it was feasible for the Western world. Uh, the same thing applies here. You see a double standard. Uh, every other day you look at the reports uh, within the United States and Israel about openly attacking the Islamic Republic, uh, the assassinations that have been taking place uh, directed towards uh, scientists. Uh, these have all traced back to the United States and the Zionist uh, entity. Uh, yet when the Islamic Republic reveals a weapon system uh, that creates a deterrence balance to ensure that there is peace within the region and that we are not dragged into another regional war, and this time probably will be a global war, uh, then the Western world has objections. It's ironic and, uh, in fact, it smacks of hypocrisy. Well, when you take a look at Faris al-Najim, the way that uh, countries in particular, the U.S. I'm referring to, who have advanced uh, their nuclear program, uh, their nuclear um, military um, ballistic missile program to the point where, uh, based on years ago, they had a $1 trillion uh, refurbishing, as they called it, uh, or renovation uh, of the nuclear program uh, that has uh, military capacities and dimensions to it, uh, that that they deemed that to be okay. Yet uh, when Iran not only has a civilian nuclear program, but wants to um, expand its missile program, that is not okay. Uh, uh, since our guest talked about double standards, I'm bringing this up. Doesn't that smack of double standard and hypocrisy in a sense there? Yes, well, I mean, double standard is the, uh, the system of the U.S. The U.S., the way it operates is always double standard and hypocrisy and the they're selective on human rights. They're selective who has a right to have this and who, uh, who doesn't have the right to have this. Um, everybody knows that Israel has all types of um, illegal weapons and, uh, you know, most likely they do have a nuclear weapon, but nobody went there to investigate and to, uh, uh, you know, do the job of what the United Nations is supposed to do. I mean, they're supposed to go inside there and check what the Israelis have. But uh, they, you know, they, they, they obviously blindfold themselves and uh, become careless and, um, you know, give the green light to the Israelis to do whatever they want uh, in the region or whatever regime that they support. I mean, the U.S., whatever regime they support, whatever the, U the U.K. supports at that time, uh, that regime or that system, um, you know, is not held accountable. Uh, if they have any kind of weapons or if they use any of these weapons also against innocent civilians anywhere. We've seen 
all kinds of atrocities happened against the Yemenis recently. There's been an eight-year war, and we don't see the United Nations talking about what uh, you know what weapons the Saudis are using, for instance. But then it, with Iran, it's always uh, you know holding them accountable, criticizing them, trying to condemn them, trying to put some type of sanctions. It's because the Islamic Republic of Iran is working against the interests of the imperialist powers, against the interests of the Israelis. Obviously, they're supporting the resistance to uh, make sure that Israel is uh, held accountable and also that Israel is under pressure and also that Israel is um, going to uh, feel the pain uh, and also feel insecure because they're obviously an illegitimate entity in the region. It's an occupation. Um, everybody knows that. And um, Islamic Republic of Iran also is a, um, a sovereign power. I mean, they have claimed sovereignty. And that's very, very rare right now in the region because most of the regimes are, um, you know, um, serving Israel, has American bases there, um, you know, normalizing with Israel. As we see, even neighbors to the Islamic Republic of Iran are slowly, slowly getting closer to Israel, unfortunately, such as Azerbaijan. When they're supposed to be closer to the Islamic Republic of Iran and learn from their deter, their, their, their deterred, uh, you know, their, their strength. I mean, their defensive power. I mean, this is this is all for defense, anyways. The Islamic Republic of Iran has never, since 1979, aggressed against any neighboring country or any regional country. They have never aggressed. They have never stolen a piece of land. They have never hurt anybody. They've actually, if anything, they've been supporting. I mean, the IRGC. Uh, we've seen them support uh, Lebanon in the time when Israel was occupying Lebanon and involved in so much, uh, you know, civil wars and stuff, things like that. We've seen that how the IRGC supported um, Iraq, I mean, against uh, Saddam, also against uh, ISIS when they took over and Qasem Soleimani. We've seen the IRGC support the Palestinians. And the Palestinian factions, the, the resistance factions, the leadership, a lot of them said that Qasem Soleimani has done a lot of uh, support and help. I mean, the IRGC as a whole has supported the Palestinian resistance and helped them arm themselves to be able to fight back the Israelis. The IRGC has helped in Syria uh, to destroy all these different terrorist groups that were funded and supported by the U.S. and their little allies, I mean, their puppets, let's just call them, uh, how really it, it's supposed to be. And... Uh, they're, they're scared of Iran's um, uh, sovereignty. As the sovereignty gets stronger and they're ready to, to defend themselves. Well, uh, one of the things that I want to ask you, um, uh, Zakir, is the fact that when you have uh, Iran, who has uh, mm, uh, not only expanded its missile program, this being one of the latest, uh, which is quite significant, really, when you t think about how many countries have the type of intel, militarily speaking, to manufacture this, which I think Iran becomes one of the, one of the four aside from uh, the U.S., uh, Russia, and I believe China. So uh, what uh, does that mean for the regional uh, equation? Because when you have the region almost uniform in terms of all regional countries aligned, um, and you have on time and again, especially with the reconciliation of Iran and Saudi Arabia, time and again, uh, Iran in particular, but now bo both and other countries are saying, we can take care of the regional security. Doesn't this uh, uh, the hypersonic missile in the uh, vast array of other uh, deterrent uh, uh, military uh, equipment that Iran has ensure that, which then would leave no room for the U.S. to be in this uh, region? The achievement of the Islamic Republic of Iran with this particular uh, form of missile system is uh, truly astonishing and must be applauded. Uh, the systems of hypersonic missiles are not something new. It's been around for many years. However, what the Islamic Republic has perfected is the maneuverability of the hypersonic missile. And this is usually done through two systems. It's one, it's either movable, uh, movable control surfaces or alternatively you'll have thrusts uh, that are built into the missile and based on the footage that has been released to the public it's very clear uh, that there's a movable thruster that allows uh, this particular missile to uh, evade uh, systems like the Patriot system such as Iron Dome, David Sling slash uh, the Arrow system which is uh, of grave concern to Israel. Now when we take this type of technology and you put it into play with regards to what had happened from a geopolitical level uh, there had been uh, the Abraham Accords and the Abraham 
Abraham Accords was premised on the principle that Israel would be able to protect itself and its allies from a possible Iranian threat. That was the premise of this. And in exchange, there would be economic uh, ties between the Zionist entity and the GCC states and a few others. However, uh, what has then changed in the framework is that Israel failed uh, in its deterrence capacity, as has been demonstrated by the numerous wars that they have lost against Palestinian factions, let alone a regional superpower such as the Islamic Republic of Iran. This has clearly sent a message to the regional allies, former allies of Israel, and now they have shifted, and you see this with the opening of the embassy uh, in Saudi and many other uh, countries are now migrating to the Islamic Republic of Iran. The statement of President Raisi is very clear uh, that we should allow our allies to celebrate with us. This is uh, good for the region and it is put Iran as the key player in regional security away from the Western axis. We are now exposing uh, the Israeli regime uh, for its weakness uh, and its inability to even protect itself against the Palestinian uh, resistance factions. And, and this is uh, an indicator that the Israeli regime is crumbling and it's on its knees. Uh, what is being demonstrated is that the Islamic Republic of Iran has remained uh, fixed on its principles. It has not wavered in its principles. It has continued to develop its capabilities to protect itself, its allies, and the causes of truth and justice within the region. And we see that there is a decline even in the Western support for the, the Zionist entity. Uh, it is a failing entity, and the glowing star here in this particular version is the Islamic Republic. Thank you very much for that, Sakir Ahmed Mayat. Attorney, activist, and political analyst. For else on the team, thank you. Human rights activist from Toronto. And with that, we come to an end for this news review. Thanks for tuning in.